Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. And in this video, I want to give my top five announcements of Copilot Studio and Power Platform that were made at the Microsoft Build Conference year 2025. Now, after attending keynote sessions and breakout sessions over the period of three days, I finally was able to summarize these five important contents, at least from my perspective, and I'm gonna share that with you in detail. So stick around, this is very important for everyone. But first, here's my intro video. All right, so the first announcement that really caught my attention was about Copilot Studio's multi-agent capability. Because trust me when I say, this is something I needed yesterday. Because instead of me just building one agent and having way too much knowledge and way too many topics on it, I had already planned of having different agents that can talk to each other and collaborate well. And this is exactly what this functionality is going to do. Now, interesting thing about here was that Copilot Studio supports multi-agent orchestration. So across different agents, they can all orchestrate together. And the really neat thing is that it's not just with Copilot Studio. These agents can come from Fabric, AI Foundry, and also from the Microsoft 365's Service Developer Kit, aka SDK. So it's pretty neat, but let me show you how this works. The multi-agents includes not just Copilot Studio, but also Microsoft Fabric, Azure AI Foundry, and Microsoft 365 SDK. So let's take a look at an example. A locomotive company has created a team of agents used to report an incident and take action. The Create Incident Report agent will receive the information you just reported and automatically create an incident. Next, the Crew Schedule Management agent will create the crew needed to resolve the issue. And finally, the Route Available agent will reroute any of the locomotives which are in path with the incident location. And this is a diagrammatic view of how the multiple agents in Copilot Studio can collaborate with each other. In this scenario, three different agents are used to resolve an end user's checking account request. When we double click on the balance agent, we see its knowledge includes very specific set of instructions that also includes prompts. Prompts such as get user profile information and get balance information. So as a test, we ask the agent, what is the balance of my account? First, the balance agent will review your user profile to gather all the account information you have on record. Then it reviews your checking and savings account to find out what is the remaining balance in each. So yeah, the multi-agent capability is awesome and I really look forward to it. The next one, which is number two, is agent feed. And these are all of the interesting things that come along with it. It gives an overview of all the agent activity, you can become basically the manager. You are now managing all of these agents and getting reviews of all these activities under your supervision. And from that, you can even zoom into situations where the agent might need some help and you've got full flexibility to do that. And once again, let's take a look at it in a demo. Agent feed is a central place to see the activity of all your agents. You literally play the role of an agent manager to see all the work your agents are doing autonomously on your behalf. You spot check it to make sure they are on the straight and narrow path and say if an agent does run into an issue, that is okay. We get an alert of its status. We zoom into where a specific agent needs some assistance. In this case, you drill into the record where the agent is stuck and resolve the issue. Yeah, so much good is gonna come out of agent feed. All right, let's keep moving forward. Number three, create an agent from a plan. And over here, I need to be a little clear because some of you may think like, Daniel, this wasn't really new. Why are you so excited about that? Ah, but here's the point. In the past, we were able to go and build an agent directly from the Canvas app. So we would go through all building it using the plan designer and then the app would be created. And after the fact, you would go ahead and create an agent from that. Now you can directly create an agent from the plan designer. And this is basically what it is. From the agent apps that you've created, you have to first start with the plan. However, using all that plan discussions, you can now go ahead and generate an agent from that. So a couple of interesting things that can be done over here is you literally hand that plan over to the agent. All the work that you've done when you initially were doing it for the app and the flows, 
you use the exact same content for the agent. The agent is building using the exact same business models that you've derived from the plan, just like I said. Uh, that also includes all the Dataverse tables because you went and created the Dataverse schema again on the plan builder. All of that automatically comes into the agent side. And finally, you have the full flexibility to enhance it. It's not that you are stuck with whatever the plan is. No, you've got the flexibility to go ahead and enhance it, which means you can add some triggers to it, your own tools, and even extend it with model context protocol. But the best way to explain this is with a demo. So let's go take a look. You provided the business problem to the plan designer, which took all the business processes, user personas, and the data models and handed it over to Copilot Studio. From the instructions we gave to the plan designer, Copilot Studio determined the instructions and the knowledge necessary to build this agent. So you can see the instructions where it is proposing what the agent should exactly do for the order status. All of this was derived from the business problem we gave it earlier in the plan. In addition, all the tables from which the agent is pulling its knowledge from is automatically added. It also has a trigger to know when to invoke the agent. So when an email arrives, you can run this agent. And finally, we can also add tools. So in this case, we can send an email using the Outlook connector. We can also add additional Dataverse tables and even extend this agent with model context protocol. The creating the agent from the plan truly is a big one because so much work is already done in the architecture development of the apps and the flows, but now you just extend that into the agents. I mean, logically, it just makes sense. I'm looking forward to it. Next is computer using agents, AKA KUA in Copilot Studio. And this is what it is. It basically gives you an extension in Copilot Studio. If you have an application that doesn't have any REST API connection, you can directly tap into your local machine by using an agent. Watch this demo, which shows you exactly how you can leverage it. Not everything in technology has a REST API. Hence, it becomes necessary to have an option to use computers directly. The setup of computer use is similar to creating an agent. The only additional item is authenticate to your local machine. You provide a clear set of plain spoken instructions, then click on test to watch the magic happen. The agent will establish a connection to the machine first, trigger the software and carry out all the steps that you provided. When I was watching this demo, specifically Ryan Cunningham doing that, he made a statement that was a little bit of a yellow flag for me. This is literally what he said. This is a night and day different from things like RPA of the past, where I would have had to script and granular record every single step. So I was wondering, wait a minute, is any changes going to happen on the Power Automate desktop and its RPA system? And the answer to that is no. What Ryan was talking about over here was just some other scenarios where old legacy RPA type of work was being doing. This is not going to be a replacement from the Power Automate desktop side. And therefore, the four new features released about RPA or robotic process automation was my fifth and the final one. And these are all of them. Uh, first was to enable dark mode. Second, organize flows using tag, test cases with two new actions, and last but definitely not the least, static analysis. All four of these are pretty awesome, but the best way to show you that is with a demo. So let's take a look. Go to settings, in appearance, select dark, and save. It's that simple. Next, we have tag. Tag is a simple way to label and organize your flows to use them efficiently. With a flow selected, you go to information and there you select any tags that are already existing in the environment or you can create a new tag. In this case, a new tag called invoice is created and saved. The new tags will appear for each of the desktop flow and you also have the option to filter the list of flows using these tags. Test cases are built right into the Power Automate desktop console with their own dedicated tab. We'll create a new test case and give it a name. Select one of the existing flows in that environment which you want to validate. This loads a very familiar design interface which is where you see the two new actions to help design the test case. You pick the test a desktop flow action. This will produce a variable which is the output of the flow you selected. Next action 
is where you assert the value that you exactly want. So we go and add the variable and we add equals $1,234. For the message, we simply say test successful. Finally, you go ahead and save the test. Once it is done saving, you go back to the console, find your test and run it. The flow will run through all its actions. So in this case, it goes to the website, it will populate all the fields, but specifically for that price field, if the value is what you stated, it will say success. And it will also mark that test status as passed. Next is static analysis. This evaluates your flows as you build them against a predefined set of rules that tries to catch violations in terms of say security, performance, design, and maintainability. This will help you to keep check that every desktop flow that is created complies within your organization standards and best practices. Here's the desktop flow and one of the actions is to launch a password protected Excel spreadsheet. To open the spreadsheet, as input, we add a variable called password and then we use it to unlock the spreadsheet. We save the variable and then from the launch Excel actions advanced settings, we assign the variable to the right protection password. But notice on the top right, we already have two warnings. Let's take a look at them. The bottom one is regarding unsafe password security. It states the rule verifies the passwords are managed insecurely with the desktop flow, but that's an easy fix. We go back to the input variable and mark it as sensitive. Next is the warning about input variable default value. What it is saying is that no legitimate password has been added yet. So we go back to the input variable and assign a password. And voila, static analysis is now 100% passed. Static analysis will initially run 11 checks that will be predefined. However, you can configure it to whatever makes sense for your company. So I just wanna end with my big takeaway from this conference. You see, Power Platform was always known as a low code. However, they are transitioning that over to the agent platform. And here's the whole thing. Now you can go ahead and build agent type of apps where you start with the plan, generate apps and agents with it, and then continuously improving it using AI to deploy it in a managed platform. The concept of low code is slowly fading away and it is transitioning over into agent platform. So these were my big takeaways. Hopefully this will be helpful to you to plan for your future. And as always, keep using Power Platform. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? Because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.